Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 67. 67, the only player to ever have 67, okay. Jacob Middleton. There you go. Yeah, and he actually did play with the Sharks, so that does count. Yep. We had the uh, VL last time, I think, or yeah. something like that. Anyway, cool, so uh, this week we'll be looking at the week in review as well as the month in review. Ooh, nice. It's and that time. It is. <laughs> uh, we'll take a look uh, at Pete DeBoer playing seven defensemen. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll take a look at the week ahead and also some updates on our EA SHL team and, or I guess just one of them, and uh, Fancy Hockey. And what was the other thing? November. November. We're going right. to open up with what with the results. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looked a little different, huh? Well, you ready to start the show? I'm ready. And on that topic, uh, free at last, free at last. My upper lip may be cold, but it is free at last. <laughs> Kind of uh, frosty up here. Uh, my face is a little colder. Just a bit. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not going back. We had that during the live. <laughs> Definitely not going back. They're asking, when, when are you going to bring it back? I said, probably <laughs> in 11 months, because that's the only time I'm ever doing that again. Right. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm happy to be, to be done with the mustache. But uh, we did raise quite a bit of money uh, this time around. I think the last time we were just talking a little bit off, off camera there. Um, the last time around, I think we raised like $100, and it was just me. Um, and we had a lot less following uh, at that point in time as well. So um, this time around, a much bigger audience, uh, some teamwork going on this time, and we raised seven hundred and thirty-five dollars. Hey, good job, That's guys! Awesome. Yeah, thank you, thank you for all those people. So I do have some quotes from some of the donations. Oh. We had a lot of co donations oh, coming this right. week. Uh, <laughs> so from my mother-in-law Nancy, uh, <laughs> we love our son-in-law so much, uh, but not so much the mustache. Time for a shave. <laughs> Marshall, hashtag, don't bring back Marshall. Uh, I'm not sure what's more impressive, your mustache or your eyebrows. Thanks. Uh, take <laughs> that was our, probably from my comment, though. Uh, however. Take our $25, you filthy animal. <laughs> um, from Scott Naylor, gross. That's my boss. Nice. Uh, from Trisha Lee Noonan, who I also work with, get rid of that thing, LOL, heart. <laughs> uh, from Michelle Cassidy, now shave that thing. There's a theme here. Yeah. Uh, Pierce Holstrom, you're creepy. I like creepy. <laughs> Ryan Steve Otter, how much do we have to donate to get you to keep it for another month? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, Jenna wasn't happy about that one. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, no, hey, so that was really awesome. Again, guys, thank you so much for uh, all the donations and whatnot. It is going towards a really good cause, obviously, for uh, men's health issues. And uh, I want to point to a, a resource uh, that we had uh, for you guys as well, the Jamie Baker episode, episode number 63, if you are still dealing with uh, something that's you know, uh, uh, mental health related. Um, that is a great resource. Jamie does talk about a lot of things that helped him, mm -hmm. a lot of the things that you can do to help others. Uh, it, it was just a really good episode. Again, not so much about the views, but the ability to kind of reach out and help our community. So uh, we've heard a lot of people actually say that that did help them out quite a bit. So yeah, there's a couple comments on the video yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, so. very, very good stuff. So again, for the month of November, I have to say huge success. Thank you guys so yes. much. That's uh, all, all because of you. We just grew mustaches. And we're glad it's over. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are glad it's over. Having said that, we'll go ahead and jump into the week in review. Uh, we had four games. I'm going to lead with this. I was going to say it after we were all said and done. But I'm going to lead with this. We're getting pretty good about uh, figuring out how many <laughs> points the Sharks are going to come away with in, in a week. Get so a little, uh, I'm, I'm patting guy. the back here, buddy. I'm right. patting the back. Yeah, yeah. so I, we said six points. We said guarantee four, really, right? Those should be a lock, the two LA games. Yeah. And then we said one of the two games, Arizona, Winnipeg, we should be able to win one. Come yeah. away with six points. That's exactly what we did. So uh, I think this is the third week in a row now. Third week. I, I know for sure second week. I know for sure second. I feel like it's the third. I could be wrong. I'll have to go back and watch it again. Yeah. You guys go back and watch it again, too. But I'm sure we'll get called out in the comments <laughs> either way. So Yeah, more, more or less. So right. first game uh, against L.A. in L.A., right? Mm -hmm. So that one, we came out to a, a whopping 3 nothing lead, and it kind of evaporated. Uh, but the Sharks played fairly well, at least to start. Kings are still a dangerous team. They've yeah. beat, it's not like they're winless in the league. So they're still dangerous. They still have Andre Kopitar, who is going to have probably a seventy-point season on a on a very bad team. Right. It's pretty impressive. Um, so he's going to he he scored a goal. I think at yes, least he did. one. Right. He actually scored uh, scored the uh, the game tying goal. Right. Uh, right near the end there. So yeah, kind um, of a bummer. Right. And I mean the Kings are are decent. They're not. I mean, they are towards the bottom of the league, which is fantastic. But <laughs> it's, um, I, 
I don't know. It, it, there's so much parody in the yeah. league that you never know what you're gonna, what's going to happen. Plus, you're playing in L.A., which is different than you're playing at home. Right. Um, so th- they get the last change a little bit. You know, there's a little bit of, of home advantage. ice advantage. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, in this game, we got to see the rare Eric Carlson goal. It was pretty right. awesome. Yeah, he uh, he, he sniped that. Thing, got the man. puck, walked in deep, and I think oh. the guys that were on the LA feed were like, he could have walked another ten feet in. <laughs> yeah. But no, he he walks right in, uh, puts it high glove over uh, Quick's hand there, and uh, just a really nice snipe, really great shot. Um, so again, kind of the the rare EK sixty five goal. The other one that stood out to me, and you can you want to say anything about Go that ahead. one first? Uh, just, okay. I was very happy that he scored. Yeah, yeah. Na- he, we haven't seen him score many goals. Nice to see him get rewarded on yep. the score sheet under the goal column, right? Because usually he's picking up assists. Mm-hmm. Again, kind of like the Joe Thornton from the blue line, in yeah. my opinion. So um, the other one that was really nice, another good uh, d- defenseman uh, making a, a nice play there. But it's Brendan Dillon yeah. sliding the puck across to Timo Meyer. As soon as I saw Dillon get that puck and pick his head up, I'm like, goal. Before you even let it go of off a stick, goal. Because I could just see uh, Meyer streaking towards the, yeah. the net there. Beautiful pass. Gets right underneath the defenseman's stick. Meyer taps it in. No, makes no mistake. Um, really, really awesome to see Brendan Dillon kind of jumping in there and getting rewarded. I love to see... You know, he's one of my favorite guys uh, in terms <laughs> of just personalities on the team. He always comes up, says hello, doesn't mind talking to the fans, always stops to sign. He's a great guy. And it's just really nice to see him make a, a really good play and get rewarded for it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I like okay. him too. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. <laughs> <laughs> now there was, uh, I think there was the, the, the OT winner, uh, Patrick Marlowe. Patrick Marlowe, once again. Pretty amazing uh, stuff. What was the stat that they put up? He's the youngest and the oldest person in the franchise to score a game-winning goal. I so, be, yeah, when he started with the Sharks, he, he scored a game-winning goal at 18 years old. Yeah. Uh, then this one here uh, ends up being, you know, he's the oldest on the Shark. <laughs> so he's the only guy in, in the NHL, I think, to score the, uh, a goal uh, for the, the game-winning goal for as the youngest player and as the oldest player. Now uh, Joe Thornton can beat that, right? Isn't he? I think he's a little for older. his team. Joe Thornton oh, from right. Boston. So right. yeah, exactly. I was thinking the game winner when mm-hmm. he was older. Got yeah, it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that so, makes sense. That's it's such a wide range. Yeah, eighteen to forty, man. I mean, the first spot there's not that many people that are playing at forty, and not that many that started at eighteen either. That's true. So that's crazy. That's and a cool stat. That, that might, that's probably gonna stay for a long time. And not that many people that can score goals like he can. Right. So I mean, I mean, it's great if you have a long career, but if you're a guy that puts the puck in the net, yeah, that's a whole different ball game, right? So, so. you want to talk about the overtime goal? Yeah. I think um, when I saw it happening develop, I thought LeBanc uh, again out on the ice on overtime, kind of doing a little bit too much, trying to be the hero. Now, I like that about him. I think the Sharks need somebody like him, kind of the aggressive, right. uh, selfish in a way. Not not that he's, I'm not saying he's selfish, but somebody who would selfishly try to do something and make things happen. I, think, I like them being more aggressive in overtime. Um, I thought he was doing a little too much, and Marlowe followed up, and Quick pretty much got the assist by yeah. tapping the puck out to the <laughs> side right to it, right onto a stick, yeah. and he put buried it. It was fantastic. Uh, it's always great to see quick lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so LeBanc tries to make the shot and kind of fumbles it, and then it goes out. Quick makes a nice little poke check. Mm-hmm. When I say nice little poke check, I mean it was a perfect pass to Marlo, uh, who just bangs it right in. Now think about if he makes that save yeah. and the puck kicks out the other way, both LeBanc and Marlo are caught deep. Mm-hmm. And now it's coming back the other way, and it's probably at least a two-on-one. Yeah. And if they're hustling, maybe a three-on-one. So it could go either way, being aggressive Works in some cases, and yeah. in other cases, like if this was October, it probably would have come back the other way, and the Sharks would have lost. I feel like this is a theme that we've talked about before: risk versus reward. Yes, yeah, very much so. Okay, just just putting it out there. Anyway, anyway so the Sharks are playing riskier than not. Nice. Well, in this case, it pays off, mm-hmm. which is awesome. The next game, um, not not like a risk reward thing necessarily, but we did, <laughs> didn't get the payoff we were looking for. So we go into Winnipeg. Uh, actually, no, well, sorry. Winnipeg came to us, I should say, yeah. and uh, it's a 5-1 loss. Although, the score doesn't really tell the whole story. I think we looked at that game and we thought that uh, Dell actually didn't play horribly. It's crazy to say that when you gave up, well, you gave up four. four. Yeah. You didn't give up five because there was an empty netter in there. But I thought the only goal that Dell really kind of gave up that was soft was that second one. Uh, kind of bounced off his glove and that shot might have even been going wide mm-hmm. and it kind of clipped his glove. He just didn't catch it right and it goes in and... Um, he, you could tell he's a little bit annoyed, I think, uh, with some of the questions. Uh, he <laughs> he played well. The Sharks did not. I thought he was making some big saves during yeah. that game. Um, I was actually kind of surprised that he started that game. Um, I don't know if surprise is the right word. I thought Jones would have started that one, and he would have started one of the back-to-backs because yeah. then Jones started the other two, which is right. kind of different. But um, 
the board knows his team, so this one unfortunately was a stinker. And, and we have some quote here from Aaron Dell. We're going to play it in its entirety because it's only two questions uh, from the <laughs> press asking him about what he what he thought about the game. So here it is. Aaron, see, you were tested quite a bit in the early going there, but uh, how'd you see that, that that second goal in the early score? I mean, it's kind of a weird play. I just tipped off my glove. So it happens once in a while. Try to build on obviously the game against Vegas. Uh, overall, how'd you feel you did tonight? I felt pretty good. I mean, it kind of seemed like every shot they got was a, a prime chance, but uh, it was kind of kind of tough to get into the game when it's like that. But uh, you know, I, th I thought I played pretty well. Team kind of fatigued a little bit to you, uh, Yeah, I mean, uh, we played a lot of games this month, and you know that's that's how it goes. Long season, but uh, and we've been on a roll. We just didn't seem to have it tonight. So. Uh... Deller getting a little sassy there, huh? Yeah, I think so, just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of annoying when you keep getting asked questions about your save percentage <laughs> and goals against and stuff. I mean, he tells them, uh, you know, uh, it's you know when when they're playing in our zone the whole time, basically is what he's saying. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe uh, maybe a little shot to the rest of the team there, kind of hanging them out to dry. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I think we looked at the the, the replays on, on a lot of the saves that he made, and, I mean, uh, well, just the game recap and the highlights, yeah. and... We kept seeing over and over, Dell with a big save, Dell with a big save, and it's he played well. The Sharks just yeah. couldn't, they couldn't get. It's like what I said in the live. It's like they were ready to eat their Thanksgiving dinner or get ready for it. Yeah, <laughs> like they just were checked out. Seemed like. Well, I think anytime you put up one goal again, you know, on the other team, you're you're asking for a loss. Yes, right? definitely. You're asking your goaltender to stand on his head the entire game, and I thought he did for the most part. He made mm -hmm. a lot of really good saves. We take a look at some of the goals that went in. The first one, that power play goal that Line put in, it was a cross creaser and Line standing in Ovechkin's office. Line mm -hmm. no slouch. He's going to put that in the back of the net. Uh, Dell just couldn't get across in time because it's going from you know one end of the uh, the ice from laterally left to right, yep. uh, or right to left depending on your your viewpoint. But um, you know Line bangs that one in. Like you said, the second goal, yeah, sure, maybe that's his fault. But the funny thing about the second goal, and I'm not blaming Eric Carlson for this, but he kind of just got walked around in the neutral zone. It wasn't even, I mean, it was like before the red line. Well, it was such like a, a dump. It should have been a dump in play because they were making a line change. Yeah. And the guy just kind of kept the puck and tried, you know, he was just trying to get it on net. Yeah. And that's what happened. So it was it was such like a a weird, fluky goal in a way. Yeah. Um, it shouldn't, it wasn't even really like a good scoring chance. It just was, went off his glove weird. Yeah. And went in. It just happens sometimes. Yeah. I feel like he was just throwing it in and, yeah. and just, didn't time it right, which mm -hmm. is unfortunate. But you know, again, one bad goal. I think we can we can forgive a bad goal here and there, right? I mean, most goaltenders are going to let one in. But the other goals that that were scored, even the the slot one timer, this is something that we've yeah. seen Joe Thornton hit Joe Pavelski all day long, mm -hmm. and we don't say that the goaltender did a poor job. We say Joe Pavelski had a nice shot on a great pass by Joe Thornton. When the roles are flipped, all of a sudden we talk about how the goaltender is out of position <laughs> yeah, or whatever totally, else, right? Yeah. So, um, that, I mean, that shot was just a great shot from really in low, and you know, Dell has to sink into the net. That exposes a lot more of the net. Because he's so you know tight into the on the post and everything, mm -hmm. so uh, there was there was that one there as well. Um, you know, uh, oh the the last one um, before the empty net goal, the fourth goal that went in, you had two human zambonis sliding <laughs> past the net. By the time the puck goes in the net, you've got two defensemen on their bo on the boards on their stomachs. Mm -hmm. Like there's that's no way to to play defense, guys. So. I just have a hard time faulting Dell for that one as well. And I, I'm, I'm not trying to be a goalie apologist here. I'm just trying to look at the goals and how they went right. in and go, okay, does does it make sense that this is a goalie issue or does it make sense that this is a defensive issue? I think anytime you've got two of your defensemen on their bellies behind the net when the puck goes in, yeah, it's probably not the goaltender, right? <laughs> right. So I don't know. I think that that game, there was, there was a lot more than just what the score kind of indicated. I think that the Sharks as a team didn't play very well offensively. And I think as a uh, defense, group uh, they didn't have it all together there as well so again kind of a, a stinker mm -hmm. on that that whole that whole game which is unfortunate yep anyway uh, moving on from Winnipeg we have LA coming into our house this time because we were playing away the first game uh, then they come into our barn day after Thanksgiving on yep. a Friday and it's an afternoon game at 1 p.m. Um, usually the Sharks don't play very well in those games no and I thought they looked I mean it was LA and I was just talking them up a little bit, <laughs> but it is LA. And this time we were at home, and I think uh, that was one of the better Sharks games that they yeah. played. And almost a shutout up until what two minutes left in the game, I think. Yeah, it was about two minutes left, just yeah. under two minutes. I believe. Yeah. 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 So it's unfortunate for Martin Jones. I was hoping he get the shutout because he really that would really help him out, you right. know, and stop the haters a little bit. But <laughs> probably not. But 
as fuel the fire that he can't get a shutout right. for the haters. Whatever. And we'll, we'll get a clip on that one in just a second, but um, I wanted to say a couple of things about the goals that went in. There was yeah. a really beautiful pass by Marcus Sorensen. He was a fake shot that, that he put on from the uh, left side. Uh, it's a nice little, like, looks like he's shooting it, and all of a sudden he just slides it right across. Patrick mm -hmm. Milo uh, standing right there, bangs it in. Uh, the overtime hero from the first game in against L.A. Kings, gets the first yeah. goal. He just yeah. really likes playing against the I Kings. I guess. Yeah. I guess, man. What it's a, fantastic. Such a great-looking goal, though, huh? <laughs> yeah. My goodness. Anyway, so I just wanted to kind of call that one out. And then, uh, I don't know, was there was there another one you wanted to uh, highlight? Gregor's there? first goal. Yes, I thought right. that was amazing. Uh, Gregor, I didn't realize how much speed he had because mm -hmm. he blew by the guy to get the goal. Yeah. It was kind of a weird play. And, and he talked about it in the in the post game. Like, it's not a set play that they do where, where they right. chip the puck way up high in the, uh, in the sky and he chases it down. It just kind of happened and he went after it and he just blew by him. And ripped the shot. Like, as soon as he got the puck, he ripped it right yeah. past quick over his glove hand, I think it was. I it? believe so, yeah. Yeah, and it, I think it hit the post and went in. Like, it was such a perfect shot. He couldn't have put it any better. Um, so it's good for him to score his very first NHL career goal. Absolutely. Um, and hopefully we'll see more of that from him using his speed and getting some scoring chances. If we can get that getting going on our fourth line, yeah, uh, that fourth line is going to have a little bit more of a punch to it than it has been. Yeah, and, and uh, kind of funny that you said it wasn't a set play because I feel like it was like deja vu all over again I've because seen it a bunch. Melker Carlson, yeah. last week I think it was what yeah. it was, they kind of just flipped the puck up and then again it was a foot race that mm -hmm. he, he won the foot race and then, you know, buries it. Mm -hmm. um, this was again just a, another one of those kind of flipped it up and Gregor took off and he had enough speed and he was actually pulling away from the defender. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he made a nice little shot and just went right in, like you said. Um, really happy with that. And then, of course, uh, we talked about the rare Eric Carlson goal. How about the incredibly rare Mark Edward Vlasic bomb from the point that goes in? Yeah, pretty amazing shot. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, just yeah. just good to see. Again, we see hey. we see it from Dylan making the pass. We see it from Eric Carlson getting the goal that we feel he's deserved for a long time. And here's mm -hmm. Mark Edward Vlasic stepping up, the guy who's known as the best defensive defenseman, right? right. And he goes and, and puts he a laser scores, beam. He scores some. He has a yeah. decent scoring touch. Sure. He's not he's not elite by any means, but. He's not a slouch either. He's not like, uh, I don't want to say any names, but he, he's not that bad. He's, he's not stone hands, he's right? Not, he's not a John Scott? <laughs> I was going to say NHL Scott All Star. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. That's fair enough, yeah. Mm. So uh, Logan Couture actually picks up uh, two goals in this game, if I'm correct. Yeah. One was an empty netter, right? So. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. They don't say how. They ask how many. Yeah. Right. So uh, Logan's goals, my goodness. Uh, how many? He had one goal For in the like first the first three weeks or something like yeah. that, right? Two, three weeks. Everybody asking, where's Logan? Captain's yep. got to step up. And What are we looking at? I think we even said last week there's going to be a market correction. He's going to start jumping up, and now he's sitting at eight goals on the season. So realistically, he could still get to almost 30, I think, Oh yeah, at the end of the season. Um, totally. If it comes in spurts and hopefully a little bit more consistently. So uh, he's looking to have a good season. He's still leading the team in points, so uh, he's – the captain yeah. of the team, rightfully so. And that, not that your captain has to be your leading scorer, but should be a leader, right? Yeah. And something. So S Step it up, doing a great job, yeah. playing uh, playing really well on the PK, mm -hmm. five on five, scoring goals again now. So um, like you said, that market correction, I think he absolutely does hit 30 goals. Uh, we'll, and we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on that one, obviously. But the first thing that we talked about in this game, Martin Jones... Uh, he lets in a goal, unfortunately, in the last two minutes, and there was a, a clip you wanted to there introduce. It, Go there ahead. is. Here's, here's a clip of Martin Jones uh, answering the question. This is going to be brief. Answering the question about, was it disappointing that uh, you let in a goal the last two minutes of the game and not get the shutout? Hey, Martin, uh, also a shutout, but they got that goal in the last second. Is that probably the most disappointing of the whole night? Oh, uh I guess. I mean, if you want to, if you have to pick out something to be disappointing, I thought we played really well all night. Um, defensively, offensively, uh, we were really good tonight, so that was good. So the second interview <laughs> by a Sharks goaltender, getting a little sassy there. Yeah. I, think. I, I love Jones' interviews because uh, he seems like a kid that has ADD. And is being forced to sit there and answer these questions, and he's just like, uh, uh, "Get me out of here! Get me out of here!" Because as soon as they're over, he's like, "Okay, see you later," and like jumps out of there. Like he just does not like these questions. He gives a lot of cliche answers, but this one was kind of funny because yeah. he was a little. You could tell he was annoyed. Like, just get out of here. <laughs> yeah. So from there, uh, we go into Arizona. Jones gets to start again. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, less than was it less than twenty four hours? Because uh, there's a time zone difference. So. Okay. 
uh, a little bit less than 24 hours. Or no, I'm sorry, because they had a 1 p.m. start on Friday. So oh, right. more than 24 hours. So I think that's why he kind of got the start. We talked about this in the live a little bit. Um, I was kind of surprised seeing the back-to-back -back and he got both of them. But uh, right now, Jones gives the Sharks the best chance to win. Granted, Dell did have a great game in Vegas a couple weeks ago. Yeah. But he didn't do... S well, not that he didn't do well in Winnipeg, but they didn't get the win. Yeah. So he went back to Jones. Uh, he had It was more than 24 hours because it was a 1 p.m. start and then a, I guess, a 6 p.m. start mm -hmm. in Mountain Time. Um, so uh, he played pretty well other than the first two minutes, three yeah. minutes, four minutes, whatever it was. Well, and even then, if we take a look at some of how those goals go in, right? And mm -hmm. it's another one of those ones where it goes kind of tic-tac-toe back and forth in front of him. There was a... Somebody on Facebook or one of those groups or whatever it was, Twitter or something, I don't know, um, he had a, still a screenshot of, uh, I think it was either the first or second goal, I can't remember which one it was that the, the tic-tac-toe play happened, but um, you see Martin Jones kind of at the top of his crease, uh, kind of defending where it would be kind of like the high uh, slot on his left, mm -hmm. but the puck is down on the low like right-hand side, kind of like where uh, Line A scored his goal. Okay. Ah, lower than that, though. Um, so on that still, yeah, it looks like Martin Jones is way out of position, like way, way out of position. But there's no context there. When you realize that the pass went across, Martin Jones went from right to left, and then the pass gets fired back the other direction for that one-timer, he's moving back and forth trying to get in front of the puck. So he was in the right spot for where the puck was until it got passed back again. So uh, And he's got all of his momentum going that direction. Like he went there, got himself set, and then the pass came in. He's trying to move over again. So um, not really fair to be looking at just stills. You have to take the whole context uh, of, of that play into account. So even on that one, I can't really blame them for that yeah. because the Sharks were kind of nowhere to be found. I was going to say, haters going to hate. Haters so going to hate. Whatever. And <laughs> They're going to find something. And ainers going to ain't, <laughs> which means nothing. Uh, regardless, so those first two minutes, uh, if we add in like the last two minutes of the LA game, that's kind of a four-minute span where there were three goals against scored. Beyond that, in those two games, we're talking 116 minutes worth of shutout hockey for Martin Jones in yeah. those two games. I think he's looked better, and in fact, you look over his save percentage in the last four games, they're all over 900. There you go. Uh, which is great because on the season, he's still under 900, mm -hmm. but he's trending upward. Uh, yeah, upward, getting better. <laughs> Sitting not downward. Uh, <laughs> trending upward, he's getting better. He looks better to me. I feel like he's making those bigger saves in key moments, like you like to say. Oh, yeah. He saves at key moments. He saves key moments. <laughs> so, Let me know uh, if you want us to make a shirt. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think he's he's getting better. He's just one of the. He seems like one of those guys that just gets off to the season on a slow start and then gets back into a rhythm and starts to do better. Yeah. Uh, gets more playing time. He did the back to backs, so uh, things are looking up. In fact, they're looking up so much that uh, should we jump into the month of review? Yeah, yeah, let's let's jump right in. Sure. Okay. So the month in review is brought to you by La Villa's Delicatessen. Really great little shop. They got all kinds of sports memorabilia in there if you want to just kind of poke around. Um, uh, Thanksgiving is over, so you don't right. need to order in advance anymore, really. But well, I, you, you probably, probably still do. should. Yeah, for lunchtime. <laughs> there you They're go. pretty busy at lunch. That's, that is true as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Chris Combo Ravioli is the top uh, top ones there. They're they phenomenal. Meatball sandwiches. I mean, oh, yeah. everything you think of for Italian little delicatessen. Yeah. Uh, they got frozen raviolis if you want to cook them later. They got fresh raviolis if you want to cook them that night. They're also already made. It's great. It's fantastic. So, flat. La Villa, we feed the league. Yep. And uh, they'll be feeding me um, probably sometime this week as well. <laughs> nice. So, pop in there. Anyway, yes, uh, the uh, month in review for the San Jose Sharks for the month of November. Uh, I would say we played, what was it, 13 games? I think it was 15 games. 15 right? games. 11 wins. 11 wins, 4 losses. Yeah. yeah so, 22, 22 points. points. Yeah. And that was, what was it, 6 best in the entire league yeah. uh, over that span. So, the entire month of November, the Sharks... Pretty much right of the ship that was practically sinking in yeah. October, and uh, now they're uh, currently, as of today, they are in sole position of third place in the division, which is one of those spots uh, for the playoffs. Which is a long shot away from when we were down in the dumps, it's near near the the last in the position, right? It's so a great climb up. It really is, and you take a look at uh, this month just in it by itself. Again, six best in terms of points percentage and, and point getting and whatnot. Um, the Sharks are kind of in that last playoff spot, but they're certainly trending in the right direction. All the numbers are pointing in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, when you compare them to just even last month, you know everything was kind of 
in the dumps last month. We weren't scoring enough. Our uh, power play was doing okay. It was kind of carrying up, but the five on five was horrible. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's consistent really was the penalty kill. The penalty kill was has been pretty consistently awesome. Elite. It's yeah. number one in the league for sure, and it still is. So you've got some numbers now in terms of uh, power play, penalty kill, and all that stuff. Yep. So in away. that month, uh, the Sharks, I'd say in October, had a real hard time with five on five scoring. Okay. They have now corrected that problem, and of then. That one month in 15 games, they scored 48 goals. 44 of those, sorry, 41 of those is on five on five. Uh, their power play percentage has taken a hit, though. Right. We're only at nine and a half percent, which is second worst in the league in that whole span. Okay, but tell them who's worst. <laughs> the worst is Buffalo, at like two percent. <laughs> It's incredible. That's a huge jump. It is. So I didn't realize it was that bad. I knew it was bad, but not that bad. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And they have some firepower now. Rasmus Dahlin is out. Okay. Uh, he got a concussion, so that didn't help. But he wasn't out the entire month. But that is that plays a big part of it. I mean, imagine losing Carlson or Burns. And right? I was just going to say that. So that's the thing. It, that's how valuable it is to have an offensive defenseman. A power play quarterback. Right. Somebody yeah. who can control the play. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that, then you're you're kind of in Buffalo seat, <laughs> 2%. <sighs> you know? So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really nice that, you know, no matter which unit we have out there, you've got either a Brent Burns or an Eric Carlson, somebody who's elite and offensively minded to kind of run that power play. You mm -hmm. know what? I, the other thing I would love to see, and I brought this up on Twitter, by the way, I would love to see Mario Ferraro get an opportunity on one of those power play units. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Yeah. Specifically if they play both Burns and Carlson on the same uh, right. power play unit. Usually it's been Blasic and Heed yeah. on that second one. I don't understand but that. That's, well, we might get into that a little bit when yeah. they're playing the seventh defenseman. Okay. Because Heed's in there. He's basically a power play specialist. Right. That's that's most of the mints that he's getting. Um, but uh, going back to the to the percentages, they're, they're Power play was 9.5%, but mm -hmm. their PK, 91.7%. Uh, they killed off 44 or 48 <laughs> penalties Pretty in the amazing. month of uh, November. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So we said that their their power, their power penalty kill percentage was at 91%, I think, yeah. in October. And we're like, oh, that'll you know fall down a little bit. It's actually gone up it's good a to little be wrong. bit. Yeah. So, man, that might not budge a little. For the rest of the season. Now that's two months worth of uh, elite penalty kill. Yeah. Maybe they get tired. Who knows? Hopefully they're going to take less penalties and uh, be a little more disciplined because I think they had the second most penalties or something. I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, looking at it. Um, but let's go back to Martin Jones's numbers for the entire month. Yeah. Um, he was. Let's see. In those, he started in twelve games. He had ten wins in those twelve games. Awesome. Granted, some of those were shootouts. At least two of those were shootouts. Sure. Uh, a couple in overtime, but. Not that he didn't earn them, because he made a lot of saves in those. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, those two shootouts, he didn't give up one goal. That's right. right? Yeah. Um, so his save percentage is 902, which isn't great. Uh, his goals against average 2.62. Again, not great. But we've always said he's not an elite goalie. Mm -hmm. uh, but he has the most wins in the league in that span. In the entire month of November, he led the league with the most wins. And isn't that the column that matters the most? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the only one I would care about, right? He's the Grant Fear of this era. Just... <laughs> Not good numbers, but getting wins. Right. That's what he was doing for Edmonton back in the 80s. Um, yeah. So uh, if you look at his October numbers, if you compare them, he was 890 save percentage. He went 2-6-1 and one in his starts and 3.57 goals against average. So he's bringing his, he's trending up where he's getting better. And like I said, the last four games that he's played, he's been over 900 save percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, he almost had a shutout against yeah. the Kings the other day. So good on him for trending upward. Um, I think the team as a whole also is training upward. That's helping. So he's getting better. The team's getting better. Yeah. Kind of goes all hand in hand. And I hate to say I told you so, but I did say <laughs> when the team plays better defensively, you're going to see Martin Jones' numbers go up or down, depending on which way you're looking at it. But improve, let's put it that way. And I think that's exactly what we're seeing. I think that the Sharks have played better defensively. I mean, look at the last few games. We gave up a goal, a pair of goals. I mean, against Winnipeg, yeah, they let them a, a ton of them in. But you're gonna again, let a stinker in every now and then. Now and then, yeah. So not a huge deal. I would like to see the first game against LA where they didn't fold kind of in the third there. But again, on the road, every once in a while, yeah, gonna get one. So um, you know, it seems like Martin Jones is kind of getting the uh, the run support now, if you will, yeah, right? So. Sure. Um, you know, again, the number is not elite, but he's not elite. So uh, we, I went back and forth with someone on uh, Twitter a little bit earlier too. We were saying, you know, you can't can't win a cup with a mediocre goaltender, and I don't think he's mediocre. I think he's good. Um, and the funny thing is, I say, you know, think of it the other way. How many cups has Carey Price won? 
right? Zero. Exactly. So you can go with a really, really good goaltender, but that doesn't guarantee you a cup either. So I think it would be... How many has Bobrovsky won? <laughs> How many playoff rounds has Bobrovsky got out of? Okay, there you go. So, I, I know, it's, it's really nice to have an elite goaltender, but if you don't have the team around him, it's not going to matter. So that's just kind of my take on it. Something we've said before. But again, as the team plays better, so too do Martins Jones number looks numbers look better. Yep. Right. So moving on from that, what's next? The uh, seventh seven defenseman. Seven yeah. defenseman. Yeah, there was a couple uh, handful of games actually that they played seven yeah. defensemen. Uh, so that means the fourth line only has two guys on it. So you're going to rotate that third person in. And for a couple games, it was Evander Kane. He got double shifted. His minutes were over 23, 24 a game. Yeah. Really high for a winger. Uh, usually he's about 18, I'd say. Mm-hmm. So uh, he he loved it, of course. He's he's getting more minutes. Every, the, every yeah. interview they ask him after the game, he's like, oh, I feel great. My yeah. legs feel great. And the Pete is like, yeah, he's, he's always going to say that. Yeah. Right? Like, nobody's going to say that they're tired. Right. And especially Kane, you just be like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> right? That's just the kind of personality and guy he is. So... Uh, seven defensemen. Uh, the Winnipeg game was interesting because we saw Mario Ferraro get a shift on the fourth line, a defenseman playing yeah. forward, which, you know, whatever. I think at that point, the game was kind of out of hand. Yeah. It was late in the game. They probably wanted to save Kane's legs uh, for the next couple games, uh, give him a break. So I'm sure they were like, who wants to do it? Yeah. And Mario's like, I'll do it. Yeah, of course. I don't know. <laughs> I just made that Is that up. how he sounds? Yes. Yeah, it's totally his voice. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Usually we get derailed on the lives, not during the recorded shows, but we're just gonna let that right. one pass. Anyway, so yeah, like you said, Mario Ferraro getting a shift on the fourth line. Why do you think uh, he got that shift on the fourth line again now, though? Because uh, it, was there a lack of? Uh, was there some maybe some disappointment you felt uh, in the way the fourth liners were playing there? Oh yeah. So I think there's see how I spoon like, feed him the, the the points sometimes. I just like I came over these points. I'm like, what are you yeah. talking about? Oh right. Just, no, 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 no. Drug the memory. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, there's there's two reasons for for seven defensemen. Um, I think so. One of them is somebody's not healthy. Uh, one of the defensemen, and my guess would be Shimmick because okay. he's coming back from a major knee injury. Um, I don't feel like his fitness level will be quite there yet. You have some questions. Maybe like Joe Thornton had an infection in his knee. Maybe he's getting a little bit something sure. going on. So, um, and I think he took a hit a couple weeks ago, and he had, he left the game, didn't he? And then came back. So it was a little little um, insurance policy, if you will, in case maybe he does go down and then you're down to five defensemen if you weren't playing seven. Mm. So that and then some of the guys are playing well. Heed's playing better. Um, and so they're kind of giving him a little bit more minutes. They're trusting him more and they're using him as a power play specialist. And you got to showcase him in case uh, Montreal's looking for a trade or something, right. right? Montreal or Winnipeg. Or Winnipeg. So, yeah, there's there's a couple of different reasons. Um, we actually, like, we have a clip here of Pete DeBoer talking about it. Um, so we'll play that right now. This is from before the very first LA game this week or last week. Are you going to go back to eleven and seven tonight, or how does it how does it come? Kind of uh, we're waiting on some game time decisions. We got some guys. I want to see how they skate and test here, and and we'll make some decisions tonight. Of course, if to play seven defensemen, you got to have seven defensemen that you really trust. It seems like Tim's kind of turned a corner. He's played some good games lately. You know, um, I think the whole group back there has been good. It's hard to take guys out when they're playing well. Like I've said since day one, the players make the decisions on who plays and who doesn't. And, um, so, you know, obviously with the way those seven guys have played, it's, it's hard to take one of them out. But we want to see what we have available before we make a final decision. So, yeah, Pete DeBoer talking about it, uh, why he was playing seven defensemen. It sounds like it was kind of an injury, uh, waiting for some guys who were banged up. Might have been Hurdle because Hurdle did come back during the week and he wasn't quite ready. Mm-hmm. So he would have been that, you know, was it 12th forward right. in the lineup? Um, so may, it, I think it, actually it could be a little bit of both because he doesn't trust any of the guys coming up from the Barracuda to, to fill in that role yeah. and play six defensemen and put someone in that fourth line role. So I don't know. I We talked about this during the live too about Evander Kane playing it. I don't mind him playing that because it was only a handful of games. It wasn't like sustaining for a month at a time right. or going like down the line. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think it's great. I thought he looked good on the fourth line. Sure. I think he, kind of a back to basics type fourth line. Fourth line is usually like a back to basics, just grind really hard and get that puck and try and try and get scoring chances. So, um, anyway, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would have liked to see, because uh, well, they had Evander Kane and they had Timo Meyer, I think, cycling on that fourth. I would have liked to see a guy like Alex True, who I've brought up a couple times on the show, too. I like. I would have liked to see him get an opportunity to play on that line. Um, he's scoring, uh, he was the leading goal scorer, I think, last season for the Barracuda, and this season, I'm not sure exactly stats-wise how he's doing, but he is a big guy, and he would translate well, I feel, to a fourth-line role. Usually, mm -hmm. you bring a guy in from the Barracuda, and you're like, like Shmeljevsky, for instance, you don't really want him playing on the fourth line because that's not really his play style. But a guy like True, yes, he puts the puck in the net, but he's got the body for it, right? So I feel like he could step right in on that on that fourth line and you know make an impact. You won't, you want to have a fourth line that can score some goals? Well, maybe Alex True might be an mm -hmm. answer for that, right? Maybe he is an offensive threat, but he's a big enough guy that you know can grind away. Yeah. Part of the other reason, which I didn't even think about until just now, okay, is it could have been a cap issue because uh, yeah. Hurdle didn't go on IR. He was only day to day. So you're still paying his salary because yeah. he's not on IR. So they might not have been able to have the cap space to pull up somebody. That could have been a bigger part of it yeah. now that I think about it. Yeah, actually. Uh, because, yeah, that, I think that, that basically kind of hand ties Pete DeBoer on making a move, bringing up another forward. And, I mean, who are the other forwards? Is it Radil right now that's scratched? I would have waved Radil. That's how bad Radil is right now. That Anyone else in there. They'd play seven defensemen over yeah. Radil. I mean, Actually, you know what? That does. That speaks volumes mm -hmm. about the confidence level in uh, Lukash Radil. Unless he's dealing with something that we don't know about, um, I don't think they have any confidence in him whatsoever. Yeah. The only question for me on Radil is why haven't you waived him yet? Um, give him an opportunity to go somewhere else, you know, anywhere else. Or if they, nobody wants to claim him, fine. Put him with some meaningful minutes in the AHL uh, and he can get some time down there, you know. Uh, I just don't see Lukash having a place on this team uh, anymore. I really don't. Yeah. I think with the emergence of Noah Gregor playing fairly well, um, Dylan Gambrell is playing well as a fourth line center currently, and I think you've got other guys who you know can can step in and play that role. Uh, so I just don't see Lukash. Could be right now just an insurance policy. They're holding off another couple of weeks before they do it, and they want to give Gambrell and Gregor a little bit more time. If you're playing seven defensemen because you don't trust them, though, what's the insurance policy? Yeah. Right. Maybe so, they don't want to do it before Thanksgiving <laughs> or Christmas okay. coming up. You know? Okay, fair. Who knows? Yeah, maybe that. Who knows? Anyway, uh, we'll have to find out, and maybe we'll find out in the coming week. Uh, we've got four games coming up this week. Uh, the first one is on Tuesday, if I'm correct. Tuesday against Washington Capitals. Yeah. Now, this is going to be a really good game. Washington is, as of today, tied with Boston for the best record uh, in the league. Mm -hmm. Washington is a very dangerous team. Uh, they're always great. However, they are coming into San Jose. Right. So they're traveling here. Um, it's different when an East Coast team comes to the West Coast because I talked about this on the live, I think. Mm -hmm. um, they're used to starting at 7.30 p.m., ending the game about 10, 10.30. And then for their body, they're going to be here and it's going to feel like 10.30 p.m. and the game starts. Right. So uh, hopefully that helps the Sharks. Uh, they get home, you know, last change, little little home ice advantage. We'll see as long as they can keep Ovechkin at bay and a couple other guys. Uh, uh, I think it's Jacob Varana is another guy that's really dangerous, a rookie, kind of rookie, younger guy. Mm -hmm. uh, another elite scorer on a team that needs another elite scorer, right? Sure. So <laughs> Washington is just a very good team, and they're fun to watch. So it'll be a good game on Tuesday. Nice. Good. Yeah. So then from there on Thursday, we uh, start out a little bit of a road trip here, right? Yep. So we go into Carolina. Yep. Carolina. Now, I know last season they were kind of the huge story. Are they as big of a deal this season? They're... They're still good. They're they're not. I don't think they're a surprise anymore. So I think a lot of teams have kind of figured them out. Um, they are the Corsi favorite team. So all the Corsi people okay. love that stat. Much like they're, last season, actually, if yes, I recall. Right? They're still they still play the same kind of game. Yeah. So they're going to outshoot pretty much every team uh, that they play against. I'm sure they'll outshoot the Sharks. It's going to be a tough tough game. It'll be uh, the first road trip game for the Sharks on the long trip. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. It'll be good. I still think the Sharks should be able to beat them. I think it's easier for a West Coast team going to the East Coast team when I was talking about earlier with okay. the time clock change, but, you know, you never know. <laughs> okay, so then from there, uh, another uh, travel day going into Tampa Bay. That's gonna right. Be now, Tampa game. Bay was the team last season that was just killing everyone. Mm -hmm. This season, they're, you said, sixth, I think, in the division, in their division at least, right? right? They're not quite the same team they used to be. However, only they have 27 points. Sharks have 31. So, I mean, while they may be lower in the standings, again, I don't put too much stock in the standings at this point in the season. Uh, they're really only four points back from the Sharks record. Right. 
Yeah, they're still a good team. Yeah. They're still the, I, most of the players from last year are there, so it's the exact same thing that's going on. Um, they just not. I think to me, I think Tampa Bay kind of looked at, wow, we got swept in the first round after dominating the season. Let's take less stock in the regular season, kind of save ourselves a little bit more, mm-hmm. go a slower pace, um, and then start ramping up towards the end of the season, which a lot of teams do. In fact, I think that's what the Sharks do. So um, I think they learn from their mistakes, and that's kind of why they're, I don't want to say they're coasting, but they're not trying as hard as they were last okay. year. Yeah. Interesting. But still a good team, and I'm sure it'll be a fun game to watch. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of action in that one. Yeah. Uh, maybe not so much in the Sharks' favor, but I think there right. will be quite a bit of action yeah. in that one. And then uh, it's a back-to-back, right? So Sunday we go from... Uh, Tampa Bay, and we fly all the way over to was it Miami? I think it's around okay. Miami, yeah, yeah somewhere, somewhere over there. there. Who I don't even think they know where they play. The Florida <laughs> Panthers. Uh, I think that maybe sunrise, that's why. sunrise, Florida, oh, it could right? be sunrise. Yeah, maybe yeah. that's what it is. I think they, but they don't really know because there's not many people in the arena. So maybe they're just getting lost. Right. Maybe they have a fan base, but they just can't find the arena. Is that what it is? They're busy tanning. I don't know. Regardless, <laughs> they go into uh, wherever to play the Florida Panthers, and uh, you know all 25 fans are going to be really excited to watch this game when the Sharks come to town. Um, it's going to be a good one, I think. I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's interesting because it's actually going to be less than 24 hours from when they played oh, uh, Tampa Bay. I thought you meant less than 24 fans. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> 24 hours, yeah. Uh, they're playing Tampa Bay at 7 o'clock on Saturday night, and then the next day in Florida time, it's going to be uh, 5 p.m. Right. start. So it's a little bit earlier on Sunday. Um, not a huge deal. Not like a 1 p.m. kind of thing, right? No, but what so. if it goes to overtime the night before? That is true. That's an extra five minutes of overtime, and then if it goes to a shootout, an extra couple more minutes yeah. there. Yeah. So it's just a later night. Yeah. Sure. It could be. You know, who knows? But um, Florida's a, a good team. I don't think they're elite yet. Mm-hmm. I think they kind of been a team that's like, almost like, it's funny, parallels to Arizona. Okay. Like, a younger team got a decent core they're starting to get older now everyone's kind of like okay we're ready yeah. they kind of made a big splash getting Bobrovsky this year so their goaltending right. is solidified compared to uh, I think it was uh, Leonard or um, Reimer right and Luongo last year and Luongo retired this year so anyway another parallel to Arizona actually by the way um Kind of like Arizona, it, the difference mainly that Arizona has more than 25 fans like 26 27 <laughs> yeah. and then Sure. I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> dogging on it. I don't man. know, man. Wow. It's a shark show. I can say what I want, <laughs> regardless. Anyway, uh, so seven games in 11 days uh, is the this uh, trip that we have going right. on. Right. So the beginning. So on Tuesday, we'll mark the beginning of yeah. seven games in 11 days. It's a lot. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. We saw November do well for the Sharks. They kind of righted the ship. And now we'll kind of see where they're going to end up in the next 11 days. Right. Yeah. So, uh, real quick, for all the fans in, in Florida, I'm in, in Ayers, I'm just messing with you guys. Don't worry about it. I know we have some folks that are watching. Like I said, we were converting St. Louis fans. All 25 day. fans. All 25 of them. Yeah, I'm going to make my apologies to the small group of 25. <laughs> 24, wasn't it? Less Whatever. than 24, you said? Sure. Regardless. Uh, so, yeah, seven games in 11 days. Uh, it's going to be a tough road trip for the San Jose Sharks coming up here. So, hopefully they can pull it together. It's all East Coast. Uh, except East Coast. for the Washington game at home. Right, but, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what what are you expecting for points? What yeah. would you be happy with? How about that? I was worried you were going to ask that. Because <laughs> Cause I just got done. Three weeks in a row. We just got done talking about how we, we kind of nailed it. You know, I, I think the Sharks had a really good November. And um, I, I think we were kind of bang on being a little bit more optimistic, thinking that they were going to write the ship, that there was going to be that market correction. I think this time around, um, I'm just looking at the... The teams that we have to go up against, and I'm I'm not overly optimistic. Okay, I think the Florida game should be a lock. I think that should be two points. Beyond that, I think maybe we win. We take one of those those other three. Like for for me, I think we take one of those other three. So I'd be looking at four points. That's what I'm expecting out of this week. I'd love obviously to see more, but I think for me, four points out of this week is kind of what I'm hoping to hit. I think uh, six points for me. Okay. I think they should beat Washington because they're at home, and then they know it's the first first game of the long trip. Mm-hmm. Want to start off the right foot. It's the last home game for a while. Um, so I'd like to see them go out and beat Washington. I think they can because of the time change for Washington okay. players. Um, so I, to me, that should be a win. And then um, Carolina, I feel like they should win. Tampa Bay is going to be tougher. Mm-hmm. And then the back-to-back to Florida, right. we're going to see how their legs are. Mm-hmm. Uh and for goaltenders, I would, I'm always wrong on this, <laughs> so I'll just start with that, but I would I would think Aaron Dell starts the Florida game. 
because it's a back to back on less than 24 hours on Sunday. So I, I would expect Dell to be starting in Florida. You think Martin Jones gets the first three starts then? I do, because okay. then it's every other day. It's going to go Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. That puts him at five in a row, right? Yep. Okay. We've seen more. Right. I think we've seen more this mm -hmm. season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the end of for the uh, week ahead. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the EASHL stuff real quick. And I know yep. we're going to do uh, every other week kind of thing for this. Um, last week, we, we talked about the standing or the, the <laughs> roster, but then right. we didn't actually put the image up. So that was our bad. So what we're going to do this week is we'll go ahead and put that image up for PS4. In fact, here it is. And uh, yeah, you'll notice that there's a couple guys, a couple names on there that are just Destroying, yeah, killing it. Nick playing, is up there. They're playing a lot of threes, right? Yeah, I think they're playing a lot of threes. Because look at their penalty minutes. <laughs> it's like two and six or something. Yeah, so but there, <laughs> yeah, it's so there's no penalties, <laughs> right? That's all. It's a it's yeah. a penalty shot, right? If you think right, penalty. right, right. So uh, it, Nick is killing it. Um, the guy, his name is Knight. I believe that Knight. Maybe I'm not yeah. sure. I, it's on the screenshot. You guys can read it. And there's another guy. Uh, his name is that guy. <laughs> um, which is pretty awesome. That's pretty um, I'm not sure. I don't think he's actually on the roster there, but um, he's been playing with them. He's part of Nick's kind of crew. Yeah. And I got an opportunity to play with them uh, the other night. It was hilarious because the one dude, all he wanted to do was fight everyone the entire time. <laughs> but he's really good at fight. He was just knocking everybody out. Wow. Like the other team, their face just was like pizza. It was just like <laughs> big red, like around their eye. It was hilarious. They show that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. No, when they're sitting down, they, their face is all jacked up. Oh, yeah. Wow. It was. It was really cool. Um, he was. Just beating the snot out of everybody, screaming into the microphone while doing it. But uh, yeah, it was it was hilarious. Uh, and then of course, you know, they, they had one guy playing goaltender, which is very rare, and he was actually a really good goalie. So we we appreciate you nice. know being able to play actual sixes uh, this time around with six humans. Yeah. You know, so uh, we actually made one goalie uh, leave, and they had to forfeit the game because if you don't have your goalie there, they'll make you forfeit the game. Oh, really? If you I didn't know it, that. If you have it set to match my goalie, apparently. So huh. again, I did not know this because we never play with a goalie. Yeah. <laughs> you tried playing as a goalie. Oh. And they, what was it? Thirteen goals against? It was brutal. I think it was eleven. Okay. Um, it was brutal because <laughs> I I should have like you know I should have practiced before we got in right. there, but <laughs> I couldn't remember the controls. I'm like learning as I'm going and. They were just destroying me. It was terrible. So there's, there's kind of a cheat though. <laughs> if you're playing goalie, you just sink back in the goal, almost sitting in the middle. Yeah. And then you stop almost everything, which I didn't realize. I so think I'm like finding the angles coming out aggressively and they're just one timing it around me. <laughs> I, don't know. I think if you kind of sink in your crease and go in the butterfly, it kind of just more it's or less saves cheating. the majority. Yeah, it's kinda of weak. But yeah. uh, if you want to watch us uh, play and kind of laugh your way through it, um, twitch.tv <laughs> slash the fin factor. Yep. Um, normally I don't um, promote that because we're horrible. Uh, but lately we've been playing with some guys that are, you know, fairly decent. They kinda help bring us up, so it's a little bit more entertaining. Right. I will warn you though, um, I'm not sure how much of the audio comes through. I know yours does usually, but a lot of it is not safe for uh, work, I guess. I get very frustrated. <laughs> okay. I'll say that. Usually he just rage quits, so there's nothing to worry about there. But um twice. some of the other guys have lots of things to say. Like language, yes, but yeah. just topics maybe not the right. most uh, safe. So parents, uh, please be careful letting your kids watch us play <laughs> because uh, one, it's ugly, and then two, the, there's there's quite a bit of language there. So right. anyway, uh, done with EASHL. We're not going to do a clip this week. I do have one, I think, but like I said, we're going to skip every other week. So maybe next week we'll come back and uh, do the roster, do a clip, and then we'll start the every other week thing again. Sure. So we'll jump straight into fantasy. Fantasy. All right, let's take a look at uh, League One here, and I actually dropped the standing, so I am in oh, third no. place now. But I'm only two points behind, so it's all close. And this is the league where, where everything is a lot tighter mm -hmm. and closer. Um, I didn't really like my draft as much in this league, um, but uh, yeah, is uh, is this the one where you had injury trouble? No, it was actually the other team. Interesting. In the second one. Okay. I mean, I, I have Mantha, who I just put on IR because they. God, they just Detroit wouldn't put him on IR. It was day to day, <laughs> and I can't put him in the IR slot until he's there. Right. So that was kind of annoying, and I just did it today finally. So, um, so I was able to. So I have one injury on that team, and then the other league. We'll take a look at the standings there, and I am in first still, mm -hmm. and still by a long shot. Like I'm just killing this league, and I actually liked. I think I drafted better in this league. Okay. So I like the team overall, and this is the one where I have Crosby injured, and uh, who's the other guy? Um, uh, I'm blanking on who it is, but uh, <laughs> they're out for a while. Okay. Like, it's not like a short-term thing, so right. it kind of hurts. So I'm expecting other people to gain on me in this league, and they haven't yet. Now, was the first league the one you drafted for goaltenders? Yes. Okay. I believe so. Okay. So that's, that's probably why. 
and the second one I didn't and yeah you can some, there's always like every year there's always a goalie that out of the blue nobody even drafted that ends up being a starter and doing pretty well right and so uh, some people kind of shift around or some people give up on goalies like Martin Jones who had a terrible October right and then storms Start back getting. right in November with all the wins so it you kind of have to read it and I, I tend to not make too many moves in fantasy uh, especially in these leagues I kind of if I like the draft especially this team I liked my draft I liked my team there's some guys that are still a little slow and I'm waiting because I know they're going to come around mm-hmm. kind of like Logan Couture scoring some goals right right so um, so I'm holding on to him and it's paying off that's good mm-hmm. all right well I think that wraps up episode number 67 unless you've got anything else you want to plug I, th- I know we have the uh, Black Friday uh, slash Cyber Monday thing correct yeah. go ahead and tell them that one so we have a special deal for Black for I guess Cyber Monday 25% off on everything in the store. Um, if you go to the website, it is, it's probably down here right now. Probably. It's uh, thefinfactor.com. Go to the collections and you'll see it. And at the very top, you should see the code, which is, I think it's Black Friday. Um, and uh, 25% off on the store. So we'll have this up for what? You want to do it for the week? I'm cool with the week, yeah. All right, we'll do it for this week. The thing to remember is we don't usually discount stuff this much, right? This is, this is kind the of most we've discounted. Yeah, so um, if you are interested in getting some of our gear, which would be great because it does help support the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, you look phenomenal in that, that <laughs> stuff. So uh, really, really awesome. Then this is probably the best time of the year to, to go ahead and do that. Again, 25% off. It's Certainly trumps the uh, the last one that we had, Patty, with the free shipping. You're yep. going to save a whole lot more uh, with the Black Friday sale going on there. So do pick those up if you would like. And again, it does help the show out quite a bit. So if you are enjoying the show and you want to uh, help keep the lights on, because that one goes out every once in a while, <laughs> but uh, that would uh, certainly go a long way in helping us out. Cool. Uh, we're all good here? All good. Awesome. Guys, thanks again for tuning in. We absolutely love doing the show for you guys. We've gotten a lot of feedback saying, hey guys, we love the show. Uh, keep it up and we'll absolutely uh, continue to do that. Uh, I, I hope to see more people joining us in the lives. We, we love doing the live conversations with you guys. So please do hit that subscribe button and uh, ring that bell so that you know when we are going live because again, it's those conversations that uh, we, we certainly love having. Uh, we've also heard a lot of people saying, you know, hey, we love the community and again, that's, yeah. that's mostly you guys. We're just kind of the forum. So, um, uh, you know, again, Join in with the rest of the folks from this community in those live sessions and uh, give us a little bit of uh, some topics maybe we can we can chat about during the show. Perfect. We've certainly done that before. So again, guys, thank you so much. We will see you next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.